Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Play Reacts. We're here for ladder fractures and our hide six and even our breakdowns of the latest things out there. This time around we have a little bit of a in-depth trailer for the upcoming Skull and Bones coming from Ubisoft. So without further ado, let's get into this and see what it's all about. Oh, so that's actually gameplay. Honestly, this doesn't look that good. It looks decent. That's all I can say. Hopefully, this will look a whole lot better. Skull and Bones just revealed new gameplay and is bringing you all that good pirate action on the Indian Ocean when it launches on November 8th. But we know why you're here. You want to know more about your ships and blowing stuff up. Yeah. Well, to learn more about your fleet and combat so you can blow stuff up, we spoke to Senior Game Director Ryan Barnard. All right, let's start yes. at the beginning. So can you tell me yeah. a bit about the Dow, the first ship that players will captain in Skull and Bones? Sure, so uh, as you Not mentioned, the Dow the is our smallest ship. It's the, it's the first ship that you get when you start the game as you're rescued by what will eventually become your crew. Uh, it's what we call kind of the so hunter-gatherer ship. So you don't have to go out and look for other people to join your crew. You gather resources and, essentially and will meet the them. wildlife part of, to part basically of the story. collect things that you'll need to use to craft bigger and better ships, different weapons, and different armors. In the early hours, will players have the tools to start fights with other ships, or is it more of a lay low until you can have a bigger boat situation? If you choose to join a PvEP server, meaning PvP is enabled, uh, you can wait, engage... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, go back, go back. In the early hours, will players have the tools to start fights with other ships, or is it more of a lay low until you can have a bigger boat situation? If you choose to join a PvEP server, meaning PvP is enabled, uh, you can engage... Uh, Wait, so he said join a PvP server. So you don't you don't just randomly uh, fight with uh, or just engage with other players. Uh, with combat with other players at any time, even on your DAO, having little uh, spear fights is actually kind of fun sometimes. So you'll be upgrading your ships pretty quickly in the game to get something larger where you can start adding yeah. cannons, some more firepower, and then you might want to uh, start taking on you know other players if you wish. It's a little bit easier to, to sink them and try to steal their loot. As players craft newer and bigger ships, what relationship will they have with their fleet? Do you envision players having one flagship that pour all of their resources into upgrading or maintaining an array of different ships for different activities? At launch, we will act, we have 12 playable ships, which we I feel call like everyone's going to stick to the one that we want the players to eventually acquire, unlock and craft. And we definitely are more in the second camp of that question where we want the ships to have uh, things that they're best at. We call them kind of tools uh, for the players. So it's not necessarily about upgrading to a certain ship and then that's all you you know use for the rest of the game. You know, I'm sure players will uh, get an affinity for the certain types of Yeah, I'm of saying they'll stick with one main ship. ship. They like the most. They're at a good portion of the, right the game. The job, and maybe another ship that they want to craft and customize out in their loadout uh, for taking on certain types of uh, activities and, and, and certain type of pirating in the game. If you were given a contract or a job from another pirate to move a large quantity of you know, stolen goods or, or dangerous material from one place to another, as one of our like quests in the game, you're definitely going to want to use yeah, a cargo ship to be this able to be a story for you to so follow. So you can use anything for most activities in the game, but there will always be the best choice for what you're trying to accomplish. You know, our pirate game, our open world pirate game with Skull and Bones is naval combat. And we definitely wanted to be best in class for this type of game, which, which is, you know, ships on the yeah. sea. So our combat is very fast paced and we also have depth added into the combat. So the types of weapons you choose versus your enemies will be important. Uh, as you're in combat, your crew actually kind of works into this combat fervor, mm. which we call fury. And you'll be able to unleash what we call crew to crew attacks that could turn into a boarding attack. And it's the only way you can actually get all the loot and make sure that nothing sinks to the bottom. When you're fighting, what are the major elements you need to consider? For example, loadout, scouting, positioning, aiming, etc. 
all of our weapons and armors are classified into an element. So it's based on, okay. you know, of course, we want to be grounded in reality of this 17th century kind of dawn of piracy. So things will be blunt or maybe they will cause tearing of the sails or they could cause flooding. Now, based on the target that you're taking on, they'll have some type of armor. It could be just wood. It might be stone, it might be clay, which we call terracotta in the in the armor uh, section. And based on your loadout, you will have either a good effect, you know, okay. you'll have a bonus damage to that uh, enemy type. What? Or you might be neutral to that enemy, enemy type. Types? Or you might actually be doing less damage. Now you're never completely inefficient. You can always take on any target with any type of loadout, but there will be better, more effective loadouts uh, depending on what you're facing. Also, the sails are a so way that you are able to slow switch your, your load out eventually at kind of any time in place for a, a, a temporary period of time where you can they can be easier to take out. Also, all of our enemy ships have something we call weak points. So depending on the class of the enemy ship, you'll see these large kind of outlined red targets. And if you take those out, you'll do a high amount of damage. You might start the ship burning. Mm, okay, I'll tell you. Effect. It might change their behavior, uh, but it'll definitely do a lot of damage. Let's talk about when combat doesn't go your way. So is it possible to flee from combat <laughs> and escape an enemy or reach a safe haven? Yes, so it might be more difficult to escape a player, for instance, um, who's chasing you, but you definitely can flee. And we have safe areas around both dens in the game, which are kind of our mini pirate villages, if you will. So you can run and flee uh, to get back to those areas, and then you'll be safe. Or you can just try to outrun or outsail uh, some of the enemies if they're chasing you, which also can happen. In some of our plundering activities, the whole point might be just to kind of uh, uh, snatch and grab so you get what you can while you can while you can hold off the enemy the reinforcements coming okay. and then you were always planning on running at some point so that's definitely possible as a follow-up like question that. if combat really doesn't go your way what happens to your ship and crew when you're sunk what happens to your cargo so if you do happen to get sunk which will happen to everyone uh, and you lose mm -hmm. your ship what happens is there's a wreck created where that happens, which has a certain amount of your materials. Yeah, figured. Then you'll respawn basically either at one of the dens or at, a, at the nearest outpost, depending on what you choose. And most of your materials are, are mailed back to you. They're insured, so you can get them in the mail. Uh, if you choose to then go sail out to your wreck and no one has looted it, like another player, uh, then you will basically get all of your materials back and it'll just have cost you a little bit of time and you recraft your ship and you keep going. With this win, nothing can catch us! You know, Skull and Bones is an online yeah. open world or open sea uh, <laughs> game. That's true. And so you definitely will be coming across other players. And whether or not PvP can be uh, uh, an option is, is based on your choice. So did you, are you on a PvP opt-in server? or not. So if you are, then you have to be kind of wary and make sure that you're not going to become the target of another pirate. But at any point, if you feel like, you know, that's not for you or or you feel like there's maybe too many players that are engaging in PvP on the server you're on, you can just opt out immediately and go to a PvE only server and you don't lose any progress. There's oh, no that's penalty. nice. Okay, there's that's no good. Switching back and forth. And then maybe you progress a little further, you get a different ship, you upgrade some of your weapons, and maybe you want to jump back into a, a PvP-enabled server. Because there are benefits for playing and risking more on the PvP-enabled servers. Okay. I guess that's... Uh, that. Alright, well I think I'm ready for that's combat. Nice, Thank you all for I wish watching. Uh, GTA uh, 5 has the, the same option with online. Channel. Take care. They have the P they have a PV separate from PvP. Instead of just players, like just massive players hopping in all at once and doing essentially whatever. But nonetheless, if you guys are excited for uh, Skull and Bones, that's the conversation down below. If you guys did enjoy that, hit the thumbs up and definitely hit the subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.